Well, good morning and welcome to our final mission status briefing for the Space Shuttle program. With us today to discuss everything that has transpired during the overnight hours on the eve of Atlantis's landing is the entry flight director, Tony Sakachi. Tony? See, uh, thanks, Rob. Uh, that's a lot of pressure, the last there. But uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, thanks for uh, showing up here. Let's see, uh, as it's been the entire mission, uh, we had a very busy and successful flight day 13 uh, morning on board Atlantis. The crew uh, readied both themselves and the uh, spacecraft for the return home. See, the crew woke up uh, 8.30 last night, Tuesday night, and hit the ground running, as typical as uh, in a mission minus one day. Uh, the commander and pilot uh, first uh, completed uh, the pilot ops, the uh, application, laptop application that they can practice landings on. And as soon as that was completed, uh, went into the uh, flight control systems checkout, and uh, all the systems checked out very well, ready for uh, entry tomorrow. We also did a, a reaction control uh, system jet checkout, and all 38 jets, uh, primary jets that we checked out uh, operated nominally. Let's see, we uh, also during the day, we did a uh, L minus one comm check uh, using Mila uh, down at KSC, and that all went very well. See, of course, throughout the day on the end of mission minus one activities, the crew uh, performs a cabin stow and just continues to get the ve uh, vehicle ready uh, to, for a landing. Let's see, uh, additional activity we did today, uh, probably saw the PicoSat deploy, call it the jack in the box, but uh, basically it's a little satellite um, that has its own maneuvering capability and it'll uh, perform some miniature tracking uh, vehicle experiment. That all went really well. And uh, also uh, on the uh, satellite, they have a little digital camera that uh, they were going to take uh, pictures of the uh, orbiter as they were deployed. So hopefully once they uh, uh, contact the ground station, they can get those downlist and we can see what they look like. As far as uh, the activities that the crew is going to complete uh, later on today, they have a L minus uh, comm check out at uh, Dryden down at Edwards, make sure uh, all those uh, uh, um, lines are in, uh, up and ready to support if we ever need them. And also uh, the KU antenna stow. See, the crew goes to bed about 12.30 p.m. Uh, this afternoon, and then uh, they'll wake up later on, 8.30 for their uh, entry day. See, uh, as far as entry day activities, uh, you guys probably already got these times from Kyle, but I'll go ahead and repeat them again. Uh, the orbit prep will begin about 11.50 uh, tonight. Uh, payload bay door closing is going to be about uh, 110 or Thursday morning. Let's see, as far as the uh, first opportunity we're shooting for is a KSC Orbit 200, and that TIG is going to be around 349 Central Time with a landing at uh, 457 a.m. Central Time, 557, of course, at uh, KSC. Uh, the second opportunity is a KSC uh, Orbit 201. And uh, that TIG is a uh, 5.25 a.m. Central with a landing uh, at 6.33 Central, 7.33 uh, at KSC. See, uh, let's see, we already showed the ground tracks. That was great. So let's talk about uh, consumables and uh, the strategy. Well, I'm sure all you guys have been following pretty closely, but uh, the weather is looking very promising uh, tomorrow uh, morning. Uh, the latest uh, forecast we received uh, you know, of course, uh, everybody was talking about Tropical Storm Brett a couple days ago, but that's moved northeast out in the Atlantic. And it's not going to pose any problem for the uh, uh, KSC uh, landing weather. See, tomorrow when we come on console, uh, there may be some showers in the vicinity of KSC, but the weather guy said those will clear out pretty quickly and uh, we'll anticipate it drying out uh, and having good weather that morning. Let's see, right now the forecast is uh, a uh, few at 5,000, scattered at 25,000, uh, very good visibility and winds, uh, very low winds at uh, coming out of the 240 direction, four peak to six. And uh, just breaking that down, that's across a six and a head and tail of one. Uh, let's see, uh, end emission or end emission plus one, same forecast for KSC, but uh, or we have a really, really good shot uh, to come home tomorrow morning. Of course, I say that, but uh, you've heard me say this, uh, no matter what the forecast that KSC is, it's always 50-50, so when we come in on console tomorrow, we'll go ahead and uh, see what the weather guys have for us and work it accordingly. As far as uh, orbiter consumable strategy, uh, we do have uh, 
uh, consumables to support out to end emission plus two, which is Saturday. Uh, based on all that, uh, right now our entry strategy is uh, for tomorrow we're just going to try KSC only, uh, just because the weather's looking very well there. Um, if for some reason we can't make it home tomorrow, Friday will be a pick em day. Basically that is we'll just take a look at the KSC weather, Edwards weather, and possibly Northrop, Northrop weather, uh, see how that looks, and uh, we'll for sure come home on uh, Friday. Let's see, uh, just a quick uh, observations that we had uh, this morning at KSC. Very, uh, very good obs. Uh, they were all uh, go. Uh, at uh, Diorbit TIG, it was few at 1,300, few at 6,000, scattered at 30,000, and the winds were very light. Uh, and at landing, same uh, um, observation. So uh, again, uh, today looked pretty good, and we expect the same for tomorrow. Let's see, and that's all I had, Rob, uh, to report, so I'll take any questions. Okay, we've got questions here in Houston, Tony, and uh, a number of reporters on our phone bridge, uh, so we'll start off here, Robert. Okay. Hi, Robert Perlman with CollectSpace.com uh, with two questions. Um, First, uh, given that you have consumables, and I know we heard uh, the crews call down earlier today saying they'd be happy to land in day or night, um, but if the, if the commander were to call down tomorrow and say the weather's solid, let's go for a day landing, would that affect your decision to wave off for the first rev? Uh, no. Uh, okay. You know, I know that uh, everybody's looking forward to that, but and you really don't know, uh, just you guys all know the KSC weather and any minute it can change. And if you have a good opportunity, you're gonna take it, no matter if it's day or night. So, you know, uh, Leroy probably, you heard Leroy talk yesterday, it's just, you know, whenever we have a good opportunity, you never pass it up. Because you never know what that next opportunity is gonna give you. So uh, I would say that even if the, if the uh, first opportunity was forecast go, that's the one we're going for. And uh, I saw on the TV schedule that you're playing to, um to deliver some closing remarks uh, to your team after uh, Atlantis is down on the ground. Um, can you just talk a little bit about what you've been doing to prepare for those remarks, if anything? Um, or have you written them, or are you gonna just speak from the, from the moment? Uh, no, I, I've written them down because I wanted to make sure uh, to capture that moment I had all the right words. And uh, I know that I'm not the greatest person doing speeches, so I wanted to make sure I had it written down and made sure I, again, captured everything. It's a very historical event. But of course, my uh, first and utmost thing is to make sure I get the crew home safely. But uh, then after that, uh, we'll sit down and give uh, some uh, closing remarks uh, to the folks. Phil. Phil Sloss with NASASpaceflight.com. A couple of questions. Um, uh, first, uh, what is, uh, could you just uh, run through the, the forecast for the other uh, Kona sites for Edwards and Northrop? Let's see. Uh, Edwards uh, is basically uh, sky clear for the next two days. The only, uh, and on north of, uh, I think it was end emission plus one, there's monsoonal weather coming in there that there's possibly there's gonna be some uh, uh, showers within uh, uh, 20 or 30 miles. So again, we'll just take a look at it and see how it goes. Thanks, and then uh, I had a question about the, the timeline for today. Uh, Pre-flight, uh, the crew talked about this uh, day having pretty much no white space. And uh, of course, during the mission, they've been getting way ahead of the timeline uh, frequently. And so again, it sounded like today they jumped into the pilot ops and then the flight uh, FCS checkout. Um, and, and it also looked like there was some white space on the board uh, even going into today. How, how would you assess the, 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 crew, uh, the crew's uh, work capacity on this flight? Uh, you know, they're very motivated. They want to make sure that uh, this last mission is a, a complete success. And, uh, you know, when we talked about a pre-flight, they just said, you know, we're going to keep pressing. We're going to do, um, you know, work as hard as we can because we want to make sure it's a success. You know, last night we put them to bed a half an hour early, and they woke up at half an hour early. And, you know, we planned things for them. You know, they have a two hour, three or two and a half hour post sleep they had today. Well, they decided that instead of you know, getting all their post sleep in there, they wanted to press on with the pilot ops and just get ahead of the timeline, and that's what they did. Okay, time to go to the phone bridge. We have a number of reporters lined up, and we'll start off with Marsha Dunn. Marsha? Yes, good morning. Can you hear me? Sure can. Yes, uh, Tony, um, there were some moving words this morning um, from space down to mission control, not to mention a poem. 
And I'm wondering your feelings as you heard all that coming down, you know, poetry, um, moving words from the crew. I know, you know, you still have landing to focus on, but surely you must have been feeling some sentiments at that time. Well, you know, I don't think you'd be human if you didn't feel something. And every time you feel something, you have to remember that, uh, you know, this thing's not over yet. But I'll tell you what, I know, Marshall, you guys have been asking me this, man, since 132 about, you know, the end of the program and how you're feeling. And basically, uh, you've given me the opportunity to, to say something here, and I, and I have it written down to make sure, again, that I don't mess this up. But uh, let me uh, go through this real quick, and then uh, I'll answer the rest of your questions. Uh, let's see. Well, as they say, all good things must come to an end. Let's see, uh, for me, it's been an unbelievable journey on a magnificent flying machine. And I'm very proud to have been part of the shuttle team. Uh, I've been blessed to have supported STS-1 uh, as a flight controller and have the honor to be the entry flight director for STS-135. So you, you can see I've been here for a while. Uh, my congratulations and thanks go to all the thousands of dedicated and passionate team members uh, who have made the shuttle program the success that it has been and contributed to the legacy that it leaves behind. It's because of their blood, sweat, and tears that we can say mission complete. It's time to celebrate this amazing accomplishment and look forward to the future. Uh, Godspeed to all. So that's what my thoughts were about this, and I'm sure post-landing uh, we'll have a, 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 some additional things. But you guys must know that we do have a motto uh, um, in the Mission Control Center that uh, flight controllers don't cry. So we're going to make sure we uh, keep that. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Next up is uh, Denise Chow. Hi, thanks. Um, Denise Chow at Denise.com. Um, over the past couple of days, um, I know the flight dynamics officer has been sort of uh, reworking very slightly the landing time. I was wondering if you could explain um, the main uh, things that go into how they decide what the landing time will be. Thanks. Well, let's see, the main influence uh, um, from tweaking them a couple minutes here and there was the uh, SEP3 burn that we performed this morning uh, to get it set up for the uh, PicoSat deploy. So uh, they were just determining the right uh, delta V and, of course, uh, 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 raising the or or basically lowering the orbit, and that's just going to change the TIGs uh, for the deorbit burn. And that was the main influence of that. Okay, I think, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, next up is Leo Enright. Uh, thanks, Kyle. Um, I, didn't want, I don't really want to push this too far, but I, I'm still not clear why um, you can't land on the second attempt tomorrow. Being from television, I'm interested in, in pictures. And I wondered, it, it, can you explain a little bit more why you're so adamant and Leroy was so adamant yesterday that you take every opportunity? Is this a, a major safety issue? And if I could, just a second brief question, whether the uh, whether people in Central America will be able to see the shuttle as it, uh, it re-enters in the morning. I'll, I'll answer your uh, last question. Uh, yes, they'll be able to see the, uh, uh, the vehicle as it comes over with the, uh, um, of course, the uh, trail of uh, plasma coming behind it. Uh, I'll, I'll answer your first question is, uh, you know, I always think about, uh, 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 you know, about walking a mile in a man's shoes. Uh, you know, you sit at the entry flight director console, and there's a lot of things you have to worry about. And uh, worrying about, there's a lot of different things you have to worry about, making sure the vehicle's in a good config, making sure we've got the crew. And you step back and look at this, and as nice as it would be to land at the daytime to, uh, you know, get some very good pictures, uh, you never want to give up an opportunity. It's just like, uh, you know, hey, let me just, you know, this is not a good enough uh, setup for me or whatever. I want to wait to here. And then you, I mean, like I talked before, you've always seen the KSC weather just get worse, even though the forecast is, hey, it's going to be uh, sky clear and, uh, you know, no wind. So when you're sitting at that console and you have the opportunity to come home, you take it day or night. So, uh, you know, I know a lot of folks want to see this, but, it, you know, again, it's just... Uh, you, when you have that opportunity and it all looks good and it's safe to come home, you do it. Okay, Bill Harwood is next. Hey, thanks, Tony. Uh, I'll ask you yet another uh, reporter emotion question, but maybe in a slightly different way. Um, you know, the ascent entry team in Mission Control has really been the tip of the spear. 
uh, through the history of manned spaceflight in this country, and they're all going to walk out that door tomorrow for the last time. And it's not clear to me anyway whether really you'll ever have or even need a team like that again. What are your thoughts about that uh, on the eve of this final landing? Uh, what would you say to the team? What do you say to the country about a team like that and its end? Uh, you know, our hope is that this is not at the end. Um, you know, everyone keeps asking the crew, us, that question. Uh, we know there's going to be a rough spot for a while, but we hope uh, um, that when we do get a, a good plan, a good direction, a, a good mission, that uh, we can come back in here uh, and, and do what we've been doing for the past 30 years and for the shuttle and, you know, the years before that with uh, Mercury, Gemini, and Apollo. Uh, you know, it's, it's tough to think about that, you know, all this uh, experience, um, all, you know, all these years of experience of walking out the door without using it. We have high hopes, Bill, and uh, we're going to uh, continue to uh, look towards the future and hopefully we can utilize all this experience that we have. Thanks, Tony. Good luck with entry. Thank you, sir. Next up is uh, Mark Corot. Mark? Yes, thank you. Um, I just wanted to, to see uh, um, if you had any updates on the uh, TPS survey from yesterday, um, if it all still look good. Let's see, Mark. Uh, when we were on console, uh, the uh, TIC folks did report that they were, um, completed 100% uh, of all review of the imagery. Uh, nothing stood out at that point in time, but of course they got to go through their standard process, speak with the management team and such, and I think that's earlier today that they're going to uh, come back with the final assessment. But we, we did know that they completed it, and uh, we're just standing by uh, to see what the final report is. Okay, thank you. And I had a weather question as well uh, tomorrow for Florida. It sounds like the forecast is basically the same for both landing opportunities, but I wanted to make sure if that was your sense of it as well. Uh, yes, sir. Thank you very much. Okay. We have Irene Klotz on the line. Thanks, Rob. Um, Tony, the, the, did the landing time change again now? Is it back to the 556 uh, from yesterday's 557? Did I hear that right? Uh, no, it's still around 557. And, I mean, it's rounding up. A couple of seconds short of that. Yeah, yeah rounding up to that. Okay, so main gear, main gear touchdown is still 5.56 and some number of seconds? It's 5.56.58 right now, Irene. Yeah. Okay. I just round Thank, up. Thanks very much. I round Thank up because that's too many numbers for me. Tony rounds uh, up. We round down so you don't miss anything. <laughs> yeah, and the editors do something else. So just want to clarify that. Thanks. Bye. Okay. You're welcome. Gina Sinceri is next. Are you there? Okay, I don't think we have Gina on the line anymore. Any? Guess not. Any questions back here before we close? Robert? Just uh, Hi, Robert Perlman with CollectSpace.com with just one follow-up. Um, you mentioned a tradition of not crying in mission control. <laughs> there have been tr other traditions in the past of uh, on landings of American flags or cigars or other things like that. Do you have any plans to pass out anything to your team? Right now, no, you know, of course we can't smoke in the control center anymore, you know, and, uh, but I think one of the things that uh, I'm gonna try to do is, uh, you know, again, it, it is a historical moment, but we still need to make sure we get this crew safely off the vehicle and we get the crew safe for handover to KSC. Um, once we get that complete, I think one of the things that I really wanna do is uh, get the entire team up in the, uh, the uh, flight control room, the white ficker, and uh, just have us all sit there, soak it in, and uh, just watch the crew walk around and uh, congratulate on each other on a job well done. Okay, I think that wraps up all of our questions. We'll close with a few programming notes. The STS-135 Ascent imagery highlights replay that you've uh, been seeing over the last day. We'll have two more replays of that at 9 a.m. and 10 a.m. Central Time. As Tony mentioned, the crew uh, begins its sleep period at uh, 1229 p.m. Central. Uh, our flight day highlights begin at 2 p.m. Central time today. We're on Rev N as a Nancy of the TV schedule. The crew will wake up at 829 p.m. Central time tonight to begin deorbit preparations for the final landing in space shuttle program history and we'll make history together. That's it. Stay tuned. Thanks a lot.